Good evening. Welcome to the QCIS channel. We're on this channel. You get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Leon Jones. And this evening, I'm going to talk about a safety barrier known as guardrail. So this topic is, what is the purpose of guardrail? Well, generally, just speaking, it's a safety barrier to basically stop a car from going over a ditch because it slows it down by a car hitting a, ter a terminal called an ET plus terminal. And there's other parts of, of the guardrail, your strong post, your weak post, your beams, your energy absorber. These are all tested in a controlled environment. Basically, a car is going 60 miles an hour. But what happens is when a car hits the guardrail, it's basically redirected back onto the road. Now, there are pluses and minuses with that. Now, when a car hits a guardrail and it's redirected back onto the road, that can be good if there's no other traffic going in that same direction. Now, again, there have been different types of attenuators, the CAT, the ET2000, the ET Plus, that's the new one that they're using. But basically, it's an absorption system. Now, let me share my screen and get more into, more into guardrail here. All right, from the Federal Highway Administration, the purpose of guardrail. Guardrail is first and foremost a safety barrier intended to shield a motorist who has left the roadway. The best case scenario, a car is careening off the road would be for that car to come to rest unhindered. In some cases and places, however, that is not possible because the roadway may be abutted by steep embankments or side slopes, or it may be lined with trees, bridge piers, retaining walls, or utility poles. Sometimes it is not feasible to remove any item. Now, in those cases, when the consequences of striking guardrail would be less severe than striking the other objects next to the roadway, guardrails should be installed. They can make roads safer and lessen the severity of crashes. The guardrail can operate to deflect a, ve a vehicle back to the roadway. Again, guardrail can operate to deflect a vehicle back to the roadway and slow the vehicle down to a complete stop or in certain circumstances, slow the vehicle down and then let it proceed past the guardrail. Now, this is not to say that guardrails can completely protect against the countless situations drivers may find themselves in. Why? Because the size of the video, the size of the vehicle can affect the guardrail performance. Again, the size of the vehicle can affect the guardrail performance. So can the vehicles orientation when it strikes the guardrail. Now, there are many other factors. Now, transportation engineers, however, carefully weigh the placement of guardrails so that for most drivers in most conditions, the barriers work and work well. Now, what you see right here is what I was talking about, the energy absorbing device. This is known as a ET2000. Well, back then it could be a, a yeah, it's an ET2000 because this is 2009. Now they have the ET plus. Uh, this actually came from uh, a county that I lived in, Howard County, right off of I-70 from the FHWA. You see a lot of these. And when I talk about a bumblebee, this right here is a bumblebee. Now, it's black and yellow. Now, 
Why are the stripes pointing downward? They're pointing downward because that's the flow of traffic. So if anybody asks you what a bumblebee is, it's this yellow. This is generally taped on to the head of the end tree. Now, what is the function of the guardrail? Functions as a system, which includes the guardrail itself, the post, the soil that the post are driven in the connection of the guardrail to the post in the end terminal and the anchoring system at the end terminal. Now, all these elements have a bearing in how the guardrail will function upon impact. So basically, to simply bring this into some sense here, is our guardrail consists of two key functional components, end treatment and the guardrail face. Now, the guardrail face, now, again, the face is the length of the guardrail extending from the end terminal alongside the road. Its function is always to direct the vehicle back onto the roadway. Then you have the end terminal. Starting point of the guardrail is referred to as the end treatment. The exposed end of the guardrail needs to be treated. So one common treatment is an energy absorbing end treatment that is designed to absorb the energy of an impact by having the impact head slide down the length of the guardrail. In other words, let's say this is the guardrail head and here's the vehicle. Well, once that vehicle hits the guardrail, the guardrail is gonna slide. Now, generally the length is about 37 and a half feet. That's how it works, the impact head. And then you have an anchoring device has an energy absorbing cable. That's how that works. Now, the end treatments function in two ways. When hit head on, the impact head slides down the guardrail, flattening or extruding the guardrail and redirecting the guardrail away from the vehicle until the vehicle's impact energy is dissipated and the vehicle has decelerated to a stop. And hit at an angle, the impact head may partially extrude the guardrail and then gate out of the way, allowing the vehicle to pass behind the guardrail. This means the terminal and guardrail is pushed through as if opening a gate. Now, with all that being said, is all this guardrail worth being placed on roadways. Well, there is crash worthiness and the guardrail is generally tested. Now, guardrail system performance is assessed through crash tests in a controlled environment. Now, the crash tests are determined by roadway safety professionals and spelled out in crash test data. Barrier is crash worthy if it meets the crash test criteria in effect at the time of the testing and established for that type of roadway safety device. So basically, crash tests for guardrail systems essentially test the two components that I told you in the above segment of this presentation. That's the guardrail face and the end treatment. Now, the guardrail face test determine whether or not the vehicle is redirected back onto the roadway. Now, during this presentation, I have some shots to show you. Here are the three shots. Here's the here's a pickup truck, here's the vehicle. What it's doing, here's the guardrail. Well, what this vehicle is gonna do, it's gonna hit the guardrail. And then once it hits the guardrail, if the system works properly, this vehicle is going to be redirected back on to the roadway system. And looking at all these still shots, the system does work.
Now, if you want to go into this topic further, they actually have an actual video of this pickup truck running this test. FHWA and, and Trinity, they make guardrail systems. And these guardrail systems that are made must be approved by the FHWA. So that means each new system that comes out must go through this testing and it must meet a criteria. This is why new systems are coming out every year because the old systems, they're failing. They've had, they've had experiences where guardrail is actually going right through a person. So this is why they have to keep developing new systems. I know drivers out there, some of them are irresponsible, but they want to make the crashes less severe. And there are going to be crashes out on roads. But this guardrail, if designed right, can save lives. Now, another test that they do is with the end treatments. Now, the end treatment tests are conducted with the vehicle striking the end treatment head on, striking the end treatment at an angle, and striking the guardrail just downstream from the end treatment. Now, below the still shots are those of a gating energy absorbing guardrail system. This is known as the ET plus. It is also a type of attenuating system. Now, for head on impacts, an energy absorbing guardrail in treatment should absorb the energy of the impact and screw the guardrail away from the vehicle as shown below. Again, what you see right here is a vehicle that's actually hitting the energy absorbing guardrail in treatment. Now, here's what it does. It's going to hit this in treatment right here, and you see how the guardrail is curling away from the vehicle. Now, generally, this vehicle, it's going to, depending on how fast it's going, this guardrail is going to stop the vehicle, slow it down. Now, again, impacts are head on and they're angled. Now, for angled impacts on the nose of the end treatment, a gating guardrail system will bend gate out of the way by allowing the impacting vehicle to slow down and pass behind the guardrail. Now, depending on the angle and location of impact, the guardrail may partially extrude prior to gating. Now, here's what everything looks like. Here's the test right here. See the vehicle? It hits the guardrail. You see the guardrail moving away from the vehicle. Now, again, because these crash worthiness tests are conducted with vehicles traveling at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, roughly 62 miles per hour. If a vehicle, it's a guardrail at higher speed, the system may not operate optimally. Again, as I stated before, I told you to test R at 60 miles per hour. Because if you're going over 100 miles an hour, you can also hop the guardrail. It's, if there's a bank, you're going to go over that bank. So the system at a certain speed is supposed to slow the vehicle down. But it doesn't always slow the vehicle down. It just depends on how fast you're going, what angle you're coming, and are you coming directly head on to the guardrail? See, you really have to be 
parcels of that because the faster you come, that guardrail can split that car in half. It can also cut you in half. Again, there have been many accidents out there with guardrail systems. And a number of states get sued if the guardrail isn't up to standards and specifications. And their liabilities on the state, their liabilities on the manufacturer, manufacturer who makes this guardrail. So what, what I'm going to tell you is this. Guardrail is a safety barrier when traveling at 62 miles an hour. Now, it can work at 70. But it's not guaranteed that it's always going to work. Now, there's some other systems that I may talk about later on, like Jersey barriers. See how they're curved? They're attenuating devices. Looks like a big guardrail. You see those at exit ramps. Generally, you see those placed in front of an abutment. You don't want a car hitting a concrete abutment. Person may not survive, depending on how fast that vehicle is traveling. They've also had sandbags. Problem with sandbags is when you hit the sandbags, sand can get all over the road. And now we're getting more into the environment. So we want to make everything environmentally safe. And when that sand is washed off, it washed off into a creek. And now we have another set of problems. Now also, as well, there's water. If it's in the wintertime and you hit and that barrel freezes of concrete, Again, when we deal with guardrail systems overall, guardrail system is a safety barrier. It's basically to redirect the vehicle back onto the road when it hits at an angle and when it travels full length, that's because it hit head on to the end tree. Again, deal with guardrail, we deal with the face, and the end treatments. And if you want to know more about guardrail, uh, check out Trinity. They make a lot of guardrail. Check out the FHWA specifications. And if you want to know what guardrail looks like when you drive, you see it all the time. You might even see some of it that's already been hit. Generally, when the guardrail is hit, the state does contract the guardrail out. I know we have a few companies here. But basically, all guardrail must align with the specifications because again our rails are safety barriers again guard rails are safety barriers but if you hit one of those guard rails higher than 60 miles an hour the system might not work so what I'm just telling you is it's safety up to a certain speed. But again, if you want to know more about guardrail, check out the information from the Federal Highway Administration. Check out companies like Trinity. And once again, thank you for listening and viewing another video. From the QCIS channel. This channel, I give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, math. And if you're looking for some political, social content, and some scam news, which I'll be on tomorrow with a video from the scam series, 
Check out the Formula One Talk Zone radio show channel right here on YouTube. Now, once I record all of my videos from the QCIS channel and the Formula One Talk Zone radio show channel, post those videos onto my Twitter page. And since this channel, the QCIS channel, is an educational channel, I also post QCIS channels content on my LinkedIn page. Once again, thank you for viewing this content, the QCIS channel. This channel, the Daily Dose, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Y'all have a wonderful, gracious evening.